guys, welcome to our chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the Chemin student. In this lesson we're going to take a look at the type of mathematics that every chemical engineer must know in order to be a successful at university and successful in industry. So this will give you the complete guide to everything that you need to know and from the perspective of a lecturer as well as a student. So if we just dive straight in, then the first thing that we need to ask is, well, what is the importance of maths within chemical engineering? Well, what a lot of students don't fully appreciate when they sign up to chemical engineering is the high quantity and volume of maths that is required in order to complete the degree because mathematics is basically the backbone of a lot of engineering degrees but especially chemical engineering. Now in order to be successful you must have a good competence of mathematics. There's, there's no way of sugarcoating it that is what has to be the case. That is from me and my perspective as both a student and a lecturer is it's generally the mathematics that lets people down. Now the methodology that you should be adopting here, and this goes for everything that we're about to talk about, you need to try and ensure that you learn the methods rather than just memorize them or remember them. Because if you learn what each of these you know, topics are and how you apply them, then that will make the problem solving a lot easier and a lot simpler because you don't even have to think about it. So that's one of the core key critical things that distinguish students that do very well and students that either fail or just scrape by and it's down to the mathematics. So the question becomes, well, what maths do you actually need? And because the mathematical concepts and techniques are so vast in chemical engineering. It would be very overwhelming just to throw all the terms at you and say cover them. So what's probably best to do here is think of these as stepping stones and we'll try and treat it like a story because ultimately you will always begin with the foundations. So we'll look at the things you need at high school and then we'll move on to the chemical engineering specific maths and give you examples of the type of thing that you can expect in different years of chemical engineering. So let's break it down into different pieces so that you can be fully prepared for what's to come. So pre-university mathematics, this is what you would do at high school. Now, the high school maths provide you with the essential foundation for university but it lacks the level of detail that is required from us as engineers. Granted, we aren't mathematicians, but it does lack a lot of the detail. So in order for us to enter chemical engineering with a solid foundation, you must be very confident and competent within the following topics. Now, this, these topics are based on my experience as a lecturer, I teach um, chemical engineering and general engineering mathematics um, here in the UK. So this is the course syllabus um, for chemical engineers. So I know exactly what the pitfalls are and what the core elements need to be. So all of this you can be rest assured is exactly what you need in order to be successful. So you need to ensure, now remember this is before you enter university, you must be happy and confident with algebraic manipulation of linear and non-linear equations, understanding of functions, how they work, how they are manipulated and general function notation, simultaneous equations including the basic matrix configurations. So general simultaneous equations is for two unknowns, but you then introduce matrices for when you have three, four, five, and so forth unknowns. 
So having a brief foundation of this is key. Trigonometric applications and some theory um, and some applications of differentiation and integration, i.e. calculus. Now, as you're going to see, calculus forms, I would say, probably about 80, 75 percent, 80 percent of all the engineering mathematics. So that last one is crucial, but we'll talk about that in more detail in just a second. Now, the question becomes, what do these actually look like? So here's a more specific list that is the most important topics that you can take away and you can make sure that you're confident in them. So things like completing the square, factorization, the double angled formula and the wave function, the maximum and minimum stationary points up to polynomial functions. So you deal with straight lines, you deal with quadratics and you deal with polynomials and the determination of the area under a curve, that's the introduction to integration applications, displacement velocity acceleration problems, also known as rate of change, so they are a calculus based problem as well, matrix multiplication with determinate and inverse matrices as well. Granted the matrices and the vectors don't have a huge part to play, but they are critical in key aspects, whereas you'll find that the calculus is widespread. So throughout the majority of the maths, it will be calculus. So now we come on to the university level and chemical engineering specific mathematics that you will need. And these concepts that we discussed are the foundation. Now we need to see, right, well, what is the specific techniques, the topics that are going to dictate how successful you are in chemical engineering. Now, as I mentioned briefly, most of the mathematical concepts are based on calculus, complex numbers, trigonometry and vectors. So that's for me what I see, especially up to master's level is those are the core big hitters when it comes to maths. But it's also worth noting that we aren't required to prove any of these principles because we aren't mathematicians. But having an appreciation to know how they work will really make the difference between successful and unsuccessful. The difference between achieving a first class degree and a lower class degree. So these are the tipping points for good and bad. Now let's start off with a calculus. Calculus is the backbone of a lot of engineering. So the things that you need to ensure that you are confident in is the chain rule, the product and the quotient rules, first order differential equations, second order homogeneous equations, higher order differential equations, integration by parts, integration by substitution, and also some numerical integration techniques in there as well. So all of these, you must know them like the back of your hand, because they are going to come up time and time again. So what you are essentially wanting to do is know all of these so is that when a problem is presented to you, you will be able to map out a solution based on what mathematical technique you have to use. And that's basically the trick and the key to a lot of the mathematics in chemical engineering. Now, some of these here, I have enlisted and included some of the general formulas for you. Now, I'm not going to list exactly what they are. I'm going to let you test yourself to see if you can name and identify all of the equations. So whatever ones you think these represent based off um, this list. So let me know in the comment section how many you identified and even list the ones that you found because some are missing 
and there are only a select few that is included. So leave a comment below and tell me how many that you've identified and what they actually are. Now the next uh, chemical engineering specific um, topics are complex numbers because they feature in the more advanced areas of chemical engineering, especially within process dynamics control and automation. So I teach a fourth year, uh, which is an honours degree level um, module in process dynamics and control. And complex numbers feature a lot in the response of certain disturbances within chemical reactors. So very, very prevalent. The things that you will need are the complex number operations. So that's even just down to the identification of the nomenclature. You, you know what I squared is and you know what I is in the context of minus one and the square root of one. You then need to be comfortable with the Argand diagram. So that's this here. That's the plot of a complex number with its real part on the x-axis and its imaginary part on the y-axis. And polar and rectangular form expressions and de Moivre's theorem. Now, de Moivre's theorem is a, I don't want to say an abstract type of complex number because it's just a convenient way of solving any complex number system that involves higher order powers to any integer. So general you know, operations are only to the power one, but de Moivre's theorem is something that covers any power. Now, if that's something that you would like to see how to solve in detail, let me know in the comments below if you would like a video, a specific tutorial on de Moivre's theorem. Now, while trigonometry does feature, um, the theoretical approach to trigonometry isn't really applicable to chemical engineering. The thing that is applicable is the behaviour of the trigonometric functions um, in relation to an engineering application. And the things that you really need are like the sine and the cosine rule. So when we deal with waves, when we deal with functions, we're going to have the inclusion of the sine and the cosine rules. You'll then have the double angled formulae and the wave function in itself. So these are probably the core elements of trigonometry that you should be looking to incorporate when you are learning chemical engineering. These are the things that you really need to make sure your knowledge is on point. And finally, the bonus um, tip I'm going to give you for chemical engineering is it's something that you don't really encounter until the later years of the course. And that's working with Laplace transforms. Now Laplace transforms is a highly specialized set of mathematics that is also used in process automation and response and optimization systems. And what it basically allows us to do from a practical chemical engineering application is we can change the signals from say analog to digital we can do that using Laplace transforms because we have different domains in the model. We could also change, say, from pressure points to electrical output signals. So, for example, one of the things that I designed um, as a chemical engineer was the sensor on a plane. So it's called a pytop. And what that does is that basically takes the pressure of the air that the plane exerts when it moves forward and it converts that pressure into an electrical signal which then relays that signal to tell the pilot and the plane what speed is actually going at. And that's where Laplace transforms come into play. So a really, really powerful but advanced mathematical technique. Now the question is, if you haven't seen these before, what do they actually look like? Well, thankfully, there is a table for Laplace transforms. Now granted, you may not be able to see it too clearly on um, the screen. The, the resolution 
didn't come out as well as I wanted, but there will be a downloadable copy in the description that you could use as a reference. And essentially what this is, is it changes from what we call a T domain to an S domain. So we have our input functions and we have our Laplace transforms. We change the response techniques. But we also then, I'm not going to go into the full details of Laplace, uh, because that's well out with the scope of this tutorial. But in essence, I could talk all day about Laplace, but you can get a copy of this um, in the description below. So that is the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in giving you inspiration and a heads up for the type of mathematics that you are going to need, whether you are a prospective chemical engineering student, you are halfway through, or you're coming up to the latter end of your studies. Making sure that all of these concepts you know will really set you apart from your fellow students. And if you agree with this list, or if you have any recommendations, let me know in the comments below. Um, I always enjoy the comments um, from all our students around the world. So, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time, and we hope to see you in another video.